Hello everybody, once again this is G, and today I want to talk about glass boilers, again. Now, I've posted a video a few months ago about a glass boiler design, but a few things have changed since then. And you can check out the original design, it's in the link below. Also, I'll circle back to an improved version in a couple of minutes, but I want to show you this particular design here, which I think makes it really compact, and most importantly, it's going to allow you to do 10 kilos per second. If you look here, we have a full flow of glass at 10 kilos per second and a full flow of magma coming out. So this definitely, at least if nothing else, it doubles the capacity of the previous generation of glass boilers. Now, the key mechanism that makes this whole thing work is the liquid teleportation over here. Now, I've shown that in a previous video with the flash boiler, but in this case, we're using slightly different materials and uh, slightly higher temperatures. First of all, we have our liquid steel over here, and you can see what it's doing here, basically. It's acting as a sort of a spring, in a sense, and liquid glass is coming out of here, and immediately it's being boiled and pushed into here, and then immediately, as rock gas, it gets liquefied into magma because it gets cooled by the rest of this magma here. Now, you'll notice something that this tile stays a vacuum, and the reason this is is this process happens so quickly that rock gas pretty much doesn't even get to exist. And this is very important because it actually prevents heat from leaking from this area into this area. So essentially they're fairly insulated. Now there's a little bit of heat transfer because you have obsidian insulated tiles. They're not perfect, but it's pretty close. Now, another important property of magma that we're using here is the way magma flows. So it won't actually flow up unless extreme pressure is applied to it. And in this case, we're not applying stream pressure to it. So what happens is you can actually have magma flow down here, but it won't pop out and destroy this pump. And so you can actually have two levels of pumps going on here. And this allows us to pump five kilos here and five kilos at this pump. And if you look at the plumbing, they get combined perfectly, more or less, into 10 kilos per second. And over here, we got glass coming in. Now, the other thing I noticed in the previous generation of the boiler is... If you're not careful and you don't set the right amount of glass, uh, you don't have geometry just perfectly, you're going to have glass potentially boiling, and that's not good. Whereas here, that's just impossible because this glass cannot reach the boiling temperature, but it gets pretty close, and that's what you want. You want to preheat the glass before it enters this temperature over here, and this is where it gets boiled. Now, the heat is provided by this metal refinery over here. You can see here. And in it, we're circulating molten steel, just like in the previous design. Again, link in the description below. But in this case, we're using 10 kilos per second. I put this valve over here, but we don't need this after we preheat the pipes. And the pipes are made of tungsten. And on the return pipe, you can just make it out of obsidian because it's not hot enough to melt it anymore. And to buffer all this heat, we're using steam over here. And why steam? It's just because it's got some good properties. For example, store a lot of heat, high specific heat capacity, it's cheap, and thermal conductivity is okay for a gas. And so it stores a lot of heat in here, and we have about a thousand kilos per second. And the way you get it here is, well, first of all, you're going to fill this with water, and then you can preheat this using other means. So you don't necessarily need to start with steel, you can use magma or something else. Once this is preheated to a fairly decent temperature, you use steel to heat it to the rest. And also, you don't need to have it at a thousand kilos right off the bat. You can top it up later. Everything here is made out of materials that will not melt. We got wolframite, obsidian. In fact, I can actually show you the material overlay here. Let's start with just the gases. First of all, we have just the steam here. And again, you'll notice rock gas only appears here and it doesn't even get to appear in this airflow tile. The whole process happens so quickly. That's just why you have a vacuum I have an insulation going on here. If you look at the liquids, again, we got steel acting as a liquid spring. And then we got magma here. And if the magma uh, ri rises to a really high level, for example, all the way to here, to the top, the whole process will stop because we have some automation controlling this. Same thing with the pumps. We have automation controlling them to make sure they don't pump too much out and create a gap. We want to make sure we have a liquid lock here. Now, the liquid lock actually in this particular design isn't as important 
because we don't have rock gas anywhere in here as in the previous design. We've confined our rock gas to this area. So really, there's really no possibility that somehow rock gas could escape and cause a disaster in some way. Just can't happen. So definitely, I would say some major improvements were made in this. Now, as far as how do you make glass to begin with? Well, these are just a mock-up. Obviously, we're not going to have these things here. Instead, we're going to have a bunch of dupes producing glass, as in the previous design. I still think that's the optimal, because you want to delete the material. You want to reduce the amount of material you have. If we do it without the glass refineries, then you're going to end up having more and more material pile up from regolith, and you're going to have lots of igneous rock piling up. It's just... The whole idea behind this is to remove material from the game entirely while delivering extreme temperatures to your turbines. So that's sort of the gist of it. But anyways, let's have a look at the automation here. Now, I try to simplify things as much as possible when it comes to automation, but there's still quite a bit here. First of all, we start with the bottom here where we're feeding, and this over here would be replaced by a valve, and this wire would just control a valve, whether to let glass in or not allow glass into the system. And that's controlled by a couple things. First of all, if there's too much magma, so if there's too much here, that means there's an overflow and we need to stop the input. Now the next thing is the heater is controlled by this circuit over here. First of all, it checks to see if, if it's above this particular temperature. So if it's hot enough, it's going to let the glass into the system. And finally, the other thing that this glass input circuit checks is if there's enough molten steel in the reservoir. So it checks this reservoir, and if it's not too low, it's going to set this line to green and let the glass in. So overall, the glass input circuit checks three things. If magma level is not too high, temperature is hot enough, and there is enough molten steel in the tank here as a reserve to continue heating it. So if any of these are false, it will not supply any more glass and the whole system will stop. Now the heater itself is controlled by this liquid shutoff, which is managed by this thermosensor. And it checks to see if the steam is below 2376, and then it will open the valve. As you can see here, there it is. You can see it's feeding it in. Now you want the steam to be considerably higher temperature. If you look here, again, it's all red, but you want it to be considerably higher temperature than this guy over here. So by about 8 degrees or so. Not a lot. But that makes a huge difference. So if you if you set this to the same temperature, I tried using this sensor, it just doesn't work properly. So you need two separate sensors. Now as for the pumps that remove the magma over here, it's just controlled by this basic circuit over here. So first of all checks to make sure that this is not overflowing. So if this is low, it's going to request more liquid. And the other thing is if there's enough magma down here. So if this is above 500, you'll turn on both of them. And the reason I didn't put a sensor here, there's no point. Because if this is over 500, then obviously this is also over 500. So we're good. In fact, you could put the sensor over here somewhere. That would be fine too. Because that would mean that everything here is also above a certain level. I just stuck it down here. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the materials used to build this. First of all, there are no space materials used in this build. So you can build it kind of in an intermediary stage. And if we look over here at the metals, we need a lot of tungsten. Everything in here basically is made of tungsten to make sure that it doesn't melt. And then as far as insulation is concerned, it's made out of obsidian. The ladders are made out of obsidian. This is presumably where dupes would go in to uh, build this in the first place. And you could just leave these ladders in here. And there's a few other things here. There's plates over here that are made of diamond. You can see here temp shift plates. And you got to put them in these corners over here. You put one here, here, in this corner, and in this corner. And that really helps to uh, move the heat around properly. Now, as far as power is concerned, again, I just kind of ran the wires from the outside, but you can run them through here. You just need more tungsten. And same thing for the automation. It's going to need to be made of tungsten if it's coming into contact with this extreme heat. Uh, over here, once again, tungsten for the most part, and obsidian is okay on the return pipe. Now, I also want to show you how the metal refinery part works. Now, this is nothing new. I show it in the original video, but let's just go through this again. We got a cold tank over here and a hot tank. 
and this is kind of cold-ish. If we look here, its temperature is below 2700 degrees. And if it's below 2700, it will open this shutoff and feed into the refinery. Now, if the refinery is full, then it will just recircle it back to the tank. And you don't want to do this forever because it will keep warming up this pipe and cooling the steel. So ideally, you want to have a dupe come in here, handle the situation. This is going to eventually process everything in this tank and then nothing will be recirculating in this loop. It'll just fill up the refinery and that's it. For the time being, there are no dupes here, so this keeps recirculating. Now, if the steel is hot enough, the valve will shut off and the steel will just simply come out of this cold tank and into this hot tank. And the priority is always coming out of the refinery and then this is this bypass is a secondary. And then feeding out of the hot tank we have into this heating loop over here. And that's basically it. Now you'll notice over here, this process has stopped. We're not pumping anymore. What's going on? Well, that's because this tank over here is full. So this stops the entire system. You can see here, the feeding has stopped as well. Now, if you look at here, actually, this particular circuit does not control the feeding. So why did the feeding stop? This is because once we stop taking away the magma, the level of magma here is going to rise, this sensor is going to trip, and that will stop the feeding. And that's pretty much it. Now, some of you have asked me, do I build this stuff in survival? So let me show you. And here it is. Now, in a previous video, I've had this already built out, but I've since added the second boiler over here because, you know, one just isn't enough. We need to have two. So, a couple improvements that were made over here. Let me show you. So, over here, this was slightly redesigned. There's a little bit more space over here now. And this gap now is empty. There is no airflow tile here. So, nothing is popping out of this tile. Because this is how I discovered that liquid teleportation thing in the first place. There was an airflow tile here and sometimes gas would liquefy and pop out of this tile, which was not great. But that issue has since been resolved. And it's a little bit laggy because we're, well, we're quite a bit in to the game, but anyways, let's not dwell on that right now. Main thing is, if we look at the automation of this particular design, it's a little bit more complicated, but Similar idea applies. We check the temperature here and we check to see if there's a liquid and then we apply the heat. But the problem here, you can see we have this gas accumulating and then we have this liquid lock that we need to have. We need to make sure gas doesn't escape. The temperature here is pretty high, so which is great in terms of efficiency, but uh, it adds a little bit of danger in here. But this has been running very stable since being redesigned from the original version. And if we look at the heating, it's basically the same idea still as in what I just showed you. So this really hasn't changed. We still have liquid steel, you know, plus the lag. But, you know, we still have the hot tank and the cold tank. The piping is not as efficient. But had I known how to make the next gen version, then I would have built it like that. You know, this works. This was slightly redesigned. Again, the boiler is exactly the same. The piping was slightly moved around. So it's a little bit cleaner over here, but same idea. And in here, there's a slight difference in this particular version. So this is a uh, half the size of the boiler, but we still want to output glass here or feed the glass at five kilos per second. So what we got going on here is basically it checks to see if there's enough glass and only when there's enough glass it's going to start feeding it at five kilos per second and then it'll stop because if we feed this at two and a half kilos per second steady which is what this could do then it's going to cause issues and potentially burst pipes and just not going to be even and that's the thing with the new version is none of that would happen you can feed it at one kilo per second you can feed it at 10 kilos per second and anything in between and there won't be any issues Whereas this particular design is slightly temperamental. And then what we do with the magma since is we take all this magma, 
feed it into this massive storage buffer over here. And then from there, it's fed into various power plants. But here's maybe what you haven't seen. Let's go over here. We've got the regular smelter. This is sort of where everything starts, more or less. I have changed the heater for the regular smelter. You'll see here. The heater now is not always heating, and I dialed the, down the temperature a little bit. I think I want to redesign the regular smelter, to be honest, because this is okay, but sometimes you get this issue where you have too much pooling going on, and it solidifies into tiles, and then it's kind of need to be mined out, which is not great. You lose half the material. So I'm going to look at redesigning this, maybe, but we'll see. But what's new here is we got this all this extra magma that's coming out. It's being fed into this pipe. And then... It's coming into this plant over here. Okay, so if you look here, this has been redesigned as much as possible. And we have magma being fed in here with extreme lag. And then the important part that's different in this plant compared to other ones is we're actually taking away igneous rock at about 124 degrees. And we're not cooling it anymore. What we're doing is we're feeding it down this conveyor belt and then we're just topping up this belt that's coming out of here and we're not feeding it early on because it would just mess up this particular belt because it's very hot whereas the second belt is cold we're only feeding it after the first belt has cooled to you know about 170 and then we're feeding in the second belt and then from there we're splitting it off and we're feeding this waste essentially and we're feeding it into this glass boiler here and if there's not enough of that we're actually feeding some additional sand from the storage below so that's kind of the idea and then the remaining igneous rock is fed into this original glass boiler yeah pretty crazy i know but i think there's some room for improvement still this is the one of the original power plants, and you can see here, this is what I'm talking about. If you look at this magma coming out, it's being then dumped into this pool of water and it's going to be cooled. So this is a waste of power. Ideal way of doing it is you don't cool that igneous rock. You just feed it right back into the system from this plant. And actually, I want to double down in here. And then we feed it into here, into this glass boiler in this one. And one other thing is when you're feeding this igneous rock that it's nice and hot, it keeps the steam here hot. But you can see we're not cooling this area with anything. And why is that? And that is because, actually, we have this sand over here that comes in. You see 50% of the time. And this sand is already cooled. And it deletes some of the heat. Because when sand um, comes in here, it takes on some of the heat before it turns into glass and essentially deletes the heat. And when igneous rock comes in, it kind of adds the heat and it gets converted to sand, which is at the same temperature. And it kind of all balances itself out. So you kind of maintain this 150 degree temperature here. Now over here, things are a little bit different. We don't have cold sand coming in, so we're going to need to remove some of the heat. But yeah. So yeah, definitely I build these things in survival and I think might look at setting up the... Uh, next gen glass boiler somewhere in here potentially to replace these two with just one single one but i don't know maybe not because that's a lot of work and these work just fine and it took uh i would say this took about 200 cycles to build this one so you can imagine that building the other one would probably take a while in any case that's all i have for you right now this has been greasy hammer and if you like this video then smash that like button and subscribe if you want to see more thank you very much Bye-bye.